everyone. Welcome back to hashtag my hobby Potter life. I'm Tammy Jo Shop It. As you can see, I've been in the studio playing around, which is exactly where I love to be. But today I wanted to talk to you about the details. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. You can subscribe below and ring the bell. If you haven't gotten any of the paperwork for the last two sessions, go ahead and register. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, it's all free paperwork that you can get. I don't charge anything and I don't have any partners that I'm trying to promote. So this is all really simple and easy if you're interested in getting some more information about pottery. But like I said, today is about the details. The first week we talked about our vision. We talked about getting inspiration and creating a vision board to help us know the direction we'd like to take our clay. The second week we talked about uh, safety tracking and testing, tested some cups by boiling them to see how much they absorbed, test some leaching uh, principles on some uh, world market pottery, and also did a binder. Uh, we created a binder to help pull all of our information together, sent a bunch of paperwork last week so that you can have a system in your own studio. This week is about the details. Before we go into some of the details, I want you to have an overall proper mindset when you come into the studio. That's the most important part because when you get there, you're going to find that there are challenges. Things happen. There's so many different steps where your one cup has to go through, your bowl, whatever. There's a lot of things that have to transpire before you get to a final result. And that re result may not come for two weeks. It could be a month before you actually find out if what you did here pans out here at the end. Um, that's the exciting part of the journey. I want you to come at it with a mindset that if something goes wrong, if you have a challenge, that challenge is meant to teach you. It's helping you reflect and renew your approach to the clay. As an example, it reminded me of a challenge I created for my own self nine years ago when I did the 365 day cup project where I made a cup a day for a year. This was about the ninth month and I did a kiln load trying to change uh, the conditions of my kiln to get different results from my glazes. I'm going to go ahead and share that clip right now so that you can see what actually happened in that firing. Okay, so let me explain to you what happened with this little kiln load here. Um, I had set it for cone five with a hold time of 15 minutes. At least that's what I thought I set it at. Well, when you set 15 minutes in a kiln, it's actually um, <laughs> one five for 15 minutes. When you enter 15 minutes in a microwave, thank you Tim C for bringing that to my attention because that's exactly what happened. You set it for 1500, 15 minutes and 00 seconds. Well, I caught this at, uh, I still had six hours to go of the 15 hours I set it for. So it was holding at 2100 or 2167 degrees for nine hours. Uh, and it should have only been 15 minutes. So let's see what happens. I'm just a tad bit nervous. <laughs> I just imagine all my glazes pooling at the bottom. Okay, I know it's still at, what, 160 degrees, but I figure it's not going to hurt them. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it didn't stick, and that actually doesn't look too bad. I'm sure these are not the colors they would have been, but I really don't, oh my goodness. Oh, can you see, did something stick? Yeah, that one stuck. But it didn't stick on the bottom, it just stuck on the handle, the handle dripped. Did this stick? You know what, my kiln wash. I love you kiln wash. See, look at You know what? I think I'm going to leave my hold times a little longer. Not <laughs> nine hours, of course, but well, then I don't know, because these really turned out good. <gasps> that's so pretty. Look at this. I just think that's, so, that's such a neat texture. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, <sighs> a disaster was actually a miracle, and I'm so thrilled.
Okay, as you can see, the result ended up being amazing. I could not have imagined it would have turned out great. I was expecting it all to be in a melted flood in the bottom of my kiln. I ruined all my equipment, but thankfully it didn't go that way. And that's what I want you to look at when something wrong goes with your clay. If you happen to make a platter and that platter cracks, that's gonna teach you a lesson about your clay. It's like, okay, why did that happen? What happened? Did I fire too fast? Did I fire too slow? Did I dry it too fast? Should I have covered it up? There's a lot of different solutions that you can find to the challenges, and that will help you grow in your skills and ability, take you to your next step. One of the details that I wanted to explore are tools. In order to explore, you have to have the belief that Anything is a pottery tool, and that's true. I have official pottery tools, and I have non-official pottery tools. They're just things I made into tools for myself. I'm gonna give you a quick side-by-side -side slideshow of an official pottery tool and its replacement item in something you probably have in your house right now. Of course, those pottery tools may have their limitations and that's perfectly fine, but it does let you know that you do have the abilities to do whatever you want to do in clay in your own space at home. I'm going to send you an email list of all kinds of pottery tools and free tools and everything that you may want to know about tools. If you can think of something that I don't talk about here, please post it below in the comments the more the merrier a community effort is always best and there isn't one person that can teach you everything you need to know about clay let's move along to techniques i'm going to email you a list of techniques and i'm not going to give you how to's on them but i'm going to give you just a solid list of all the things that are out there official technique, terminology, and you can research them on YouTube, on Google, in books, whatever your learning style is, and just go for it. Just try them and experience them. Jack of all trades, master of none, though oftentimes better than master of one. I always thought that first part of that quote meant that you wanted to be the master of something. But in truth, you may want to be the jack of all trades when it comes into the studio. If you've experienced everything, it helps you to be able to go out there and grab the ones that you want to fine tune. I did a project called 30 Bowls, 30 Days, 30 Techniques. It was a real time video series. It's still here on YouTube. I, you know, I'll put a link below just thinking of, <laughs> I'll put a link below. I don't like to go back to it because I didn't know how to do many of the techniques. I was just trying out 30 of them on 30 different bowls. The reason I did that 30 day experience was so that I could try as many as I could at one time and be able to look at them all together and say, I like this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then take just those few and learn more about those. So I'm going to do another 30 day trek like that in the near future so that I can really um, get out there and see if there's another technique I need to explore again. Okay, as a, a summary to pull together different techniques, you really want to be careful of your quality of work. Um, when you fire something to bisque, the best idea is to fire something that you're planning to carry all the way through to the end, because if you don't bisque something that's not good enough, you can actually reuse that clay. But in this case right here, I kept these because I really wanted to try some glazing techniques on them. So these ones were saved for testing purposes only. I know I'm not gonna be selling these. I know I'm not gonna be giving these to anyone. Uh, but let me share with you some of the challenges that happen that differentiate a good piece of pottery and a poor piece of pottery. 
Okay, this cup right here, I did my test glazing on it. That's what I really wanted to do. But the reason why this is in my scrap heap is a couple reasons. If you look inside, you can see in the bottom of this piece that there is a ridge in there. And I didn't double check it. I was throwing real quick that day and just kind of threw it, but also left it out too long. So the bottom is real heavy. This is a very heavy cup. If you picked it up, you would say, oh my goodness, this is, it's heavy on the bottom. You don't want that. You want it even all the way through. You want the base to be thin enough. I waited too long. I tried to save it and it just didn't happen. This cup right here is another one I did a test on and I love these colors together. But the problem with this cup, you can probably see it, is it's not balanced. This handle is ginormous and it, it's not really comfortable to hold in your hand. I have to put, if I were to hold it down here, this is the right cup, it feels great. But as far as people holding it, there's a lot of pressure on my hand right here that I feel makes this a poor cup. The other thing that you probably can't see is the bottom of this is really rough. I would need to sand this before I glaze it. It's not something I can't fix right here, but if you really grab a handmade cup and the bottom of it isn't smooth, you know it's gonna scratch a wood table. Not good quality. Okay, so we got these two guys down. What's wrong with this one? This one doesn't look too bad. Well, right here, this little line, I'm this little thin line I made is very sharp. If I run my fingers across it, it's dangerous. And these little moss, uh, this little tree texture here is also really sharp and it's not necessarily something that will be solved by sanding it because it will probably pop these pieces off this is a little bit of a dangerous piece and should be should have been done on something more decorative than just a bowl that people may want to use the other thing is i got some wax in there so i'm going to need to fire it again but the bottom of it is fine and the shape of the form of it is is nice but uh there's just uh it's a little bit dangerous this one right here, I don't know how clearly this will come in, but there's a hairline crack on the bottom. And the reason that happened is because I didn't trim the bottom well. This and this were in the same drying day where I missed it. If you're here in Modesto, it gets to about 110 degrees during the summer. And it was one of those days where a half hour went by and it was just too long. Uh, I ended up getting a crack in it during the bisque phase, so I kept it. It's not a bad piece. It's, you know, it's, it'll, it'll do for a great test later on. The final one I want to share, let me clean these off, is a warped flat piece. You can see that this is not flat. Um, you can see that it's, it's uh, arced. And the way I could have fixed that and made sure that didn't happen is I could have put some weight on top of it, like uh, in a bean bag. A lot of people have these bean bag weights. They put beans in it or rice in it, and they set it on here or sand even with an old t-shirt and just set it on there to let it dry slowly. I should have covered it, but I set it out and it has muscle memory. So it decided it wanted to give me a little bit of a a little bit of an arc. I'm saving this because I want to try some uh, Raku firing on it and see what kind of looks I can get. So to bring it all together here, it's all about the details, being able to reflect on the challenges you have and renew your approach, being able to accept and embrace everything that's happening in your studio and grow from it. The whole point is to grow in your clay journey, enjoying the entire experience. Hope you guys enjoyed today. Uh, register if you want some email printouts and some uh, information to put inside your binders and we will see you next week with the process from beginning to end I'm going to share everything I shared in one two and three but share it in a working model that I would use in my own studio hope you guys enjoy we'll see you next time